You know how you've been scrolling through Instagram for hours watching reels about babies and animals and TikToks that have been repurposed to be reels and then suddenly you find a video that just completely changes your life forever? Yeah, I bet you know that feeling. Also, do you ever deal with blank canvas syndrome where like all of your thoughts and ideas just completely disappear the second you see a blank canvas? You definitely know that feeling. Well, say goodbye to two birds because today's video is one hell of a stone. So a couple of weeks ago, I was scrolling through my Instagram reels as one does, and I came across this amazing artist called S. Hazeldean or Hazeldean, I'm not sure how to say it, but um, she does this really cool spacey galaxy art that I really love. Um, but what I love most about this reel is how she starts out and the technique she uses when starting out her galaxy paintings. And I looked at it and I thought, you know what? The potential is endless. While watching that video, I realized that using that technique is actually a great way to combat blank canvas syndrome and also allow some randomness to be a part of our painting process. So in today's video, I want to explore this technique of starting a new painting without starting it from scratch, in a sense. I've linked the original reel down below in the description and of course if you enjoyed this video and learned something today then please remember to like, comment and subscribe. It really helps the channel out so so much. Alrighty, let's dive right in. To start off, this is the clip from her reel that really got me thinking because these abstract shapes could be so versatile. Imagine if it was a character portrait with this hair or like a surreal landscape where these shapes form a magical aura element. But the trick here is the fan brush. It seems to have these separated bristles that carry a lot of paint and there is the added benefit of the canvas texture. So step one for us is to try and recreate the brush digitally. With digital brushes, you want to think about the cross section or alpha of the paint stroke. I did a whole video about making custom brushes in Krita that I'll link up here, but since this fan brush has a few separate clumps of paint that create these multiple lines when you paint with it, we're gonna do a bunch of brush strokes with spaces in between. I also masked some texture into the alpha just to mimic the canvas texture. Then I stamped the alpha in on a new pixel brush and started to play with dynamics. I want some size dynamics, but most importantly, this brush needs to rotate with me. So I set the rotation dynamics to change with drawing angle. I also went in and added a little bit of canvas texture to the brush, but I found that nice as it looked, it was slowing the brush down too much. I paint on an 8K canvas, which is massive. And so sometimes these custom textured brushes like to slow down on me. So I did eventually get rid of it and just stick with the brush itself. But hey, you never know unless you try. So here is the brush and I really like how it moves. Just because I want to stay as true to the original reel as possible, I started with a super dark indigo canvas and I grabbed some bright purples, pinks and blues to put the initial brush strokes down. And this was actually so much fun to do. I grabbed a few different colours and went around the canvas creating these fun lines and curves. And you know what was crazy? I had so much fun doing this, I didn't even realise I'd started with a plain canvas. I think part of this is just the magic of following any tutorial really, because you kind of want to try and see if it works for you and your mind just kind of bypasses the fear of it all. But I also feel like with a brush like this one, the rotation dynamics add so much randomness. And that to me feels like the most important aspect of traditional painting that is missing in digital art. 
I feel like the whole you never know what brushes can do thing adds such a cool element of serendipity to painting on a physical canvas, while with digital art, you basically tell the machine what to do and it does exactly that. And while that may be grand if you need control over your art, I like to let the paints do their own thing. It kind of feels like collaborating with the spirit of art itself when randomness gets to have a say in it. Oh God, this got too deep, but you know what I mean? Anyway, once we have our lines down, we start to realize that as always, we've done way too much. So it is time to blend some negative space back into the canvas. This is the bit that I'm really bad at. Cause like, when do you say it's enough negative space? Anyway, so the next step was to grab my favorite textured blender and blend some of the edges away. I really like the fact that some of those edges faded away into the canvas. It adds so much dimension to the piece. Now, here's the thing. When I first started making these marks, I started to think of maybe just an ethereal face that pops out from the lines and the lines form some messy hair around it. But as soon as I blended things out, a new composition started to appear. And I've just been unconsciously drawing a lot of side faces. So hey, let's add another one to the pile, shall we? <laughs> but with this one, I very specifically did not want to do super realistic colors. All those blues and purples had to stay preserved. I started with a really loud hot pink highlight on the higher planes of the face and pulled that down a little warmer at the jaw. The midtones and the shadow had to be the same shade of blue that was in the background just for some color harmony. Same with the hair, except I went more purple than pink. I wasn't too fussed about the lighting in this piece, this was mostly just an experimental painting. After some refinement and texturing, it was time to throw a Hail Mary and add in some much needed color contrast. I literally held my breath before doing this because I was worried it would be awful, but I grabbed this hot neon yellow and a chalk brush and I painted on some bright specular cheekbone highlight. And oh my God, I'm so glad I did it because look how good that looks. And then I added some warm glow around her as well, just to really push her out of the background and make her pop. However, that caused some of those beautiful initial curves to be lost. So then I made a new layer and this time I made those abstract curves with gold. Now, the main reason I wanted to do a side profile was because of a dream I had involving a gold earring. So the final big step was to get that painted in before adding all the little finishing touches. And here's the final piece. And can I just say, this was probably the easiest painting I've ever started. And the end result just feels so up my alley. I wanna stick to this style forever. Okay, but how cool is that end product and how easy was it to just get right down into painting? This process gave me that feeling of like starting traditionally where you kind of splatter a bunch of paint onto a canvas and then you go about finding shapes into it and allowing the painting to speak to you. Kind of like that, but digitally, which is way less clean up. What do you guys think? Is this a technique that you might try out to combat blank canvas syndrome? Are there any other techniques that really work well for you? Let me know down in the comments below. I have linked the original reel by S. Hazeldean down in the description. Make sure you go show her some love for me. And if you enjoyed this video and learned something today, please remember to show it some love as well by dropping me a big thumbs up and leaving a comment below and subscribe to my channel because it really does help out a lot.
Come say hi on Instagram and if you want to grab my custom brush kit that I made from scratch, um, you can check it out on my Patreon as individual listings for Photoshop and Krita, or you can grab the brush kit and every other reward I've ever put up on Patreon by signing up as a patron and that really helps the channel out a lot as well. Alrighty, that's all I have to say today. So thank you guys so, so much for hanging out with me. I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I have. If you want to see me try a bunch more Instagram hacks, check out this video down here which was loads and loads of fun but yeah that's everything i have to say so i'll see you guys on the next one bye